I'll go on record saying that maybe my favorite video game series ever is Mass Effect. And a big reason why is everything feels plausible in that universe, like it has a reason for being there. I think a great example of this is Mass Effect's awesome weaponry. They're a lot more plausible than energy beams and laser weapons, but could they really work? In the Mass Effect universe, most races are outfitted with guns that use a special element called Element Zero in conjunction with electric fields to propel projectiles at kinetically crunching speeds. The game itself says this happens because of electromagnetic acceleration, but is this more science or fiction? We call it electromagnetism because electricity and magnetism are intertwined in physics. One can create and have an effect on the other, and one of those effects is called the Lorenz force. I should go. The Lorenz force is a force that acts on some conductive material like a wire in response to electric current running through it. So for example, in this orange wire here, under a current I that creates a magnetic field, B, the wire will experience a force perpendicular to these two vectors, F. This relationship gives us a pretty simple equation that says if we put enough juice through something like a wire, it will experience a tremendous amount of force and could accelerate a projectile. And guess what? We already have a weapon that does this. It's called a railgun, and it's a weapon scary enough to scare the reapers. After some calibrations, of course. A railgun is a weapon that uses electricity to accelerate projectiles to speeds that conventional weapons just cannot reach. Here is the Navy testing a railgun firing a projectile at over two kilometers per second with the energy of a school bus moving at 500 kilometers per hour. I don't know why I chose that image. A railgun achieves these speeds using the Lorenz force we just learned about. So inside of a railgun you find two rails, hence the name, and an armature going across them, or like the wire in our example. So when a railgun fires, a massive amount of electricity flows through the rails, creates a magnetic field near the wire, which forces it out of the gun at crazy speeds. Assuming direct control, who dis? But the Lorenz force isn't massive, so railguns use an enormous amount of electricity, like five million amps worth, or a million times more than you'd find in something like a Tesla coil. And when this happens, it creates a magnetic field inside of the weapon that's many times stronger than even an MRI. And so, Using the Lorenz equation and knowing how far apart a railgun's rails are, we can calculate that railguns produce a tremendous amount of force to accelerate their projectiles, like the same amount of force that a space shuttle engine puts out. Knowing that we already have electromagnetic weapons, just how realistic are massive surprise Omni Tool? I'm gonna be conservative and assume that everything about a Mass Effect rifle is a lot less than you'd find on a Navy battleship, maybe a hundred times less. So. If a Mass Effect rifle uses 50,000 amps across maybe 2.5 centimeters of armature, or that wire in our previous example, it will generate a force inside the gun. This force will accelerate a projectile of some mass. Mass Effect states that its guns use metal shavings as ammunition about the size of a grain of sand. So if we divide this by the mass of a grain of sand, we'll get acceleration. And if we know how long the barrel length is for a rifle, we can also calculate the muzzle velocity for a Mass Effect rifle. So oh, let's do all that. And if you do that, it gives you a muzzle velocity of around 86 kilometers per second. The only question now is, could a sand grain sized piece of debris going this quickly really do mass effect level damage? Absolutely. This is a photo of a hypervelocity impact using a similarly sized piece of debris as we did in our calculations, only this is at the NASA Ames Research Facility and moving 10 times slower. Notice the general destruction and emission of light? NASA uses debris tests like these because even a small piece of metal moving this quickly could pierce through the ISS, or an astronaut, or a Blue Sun's Merc. So yes, Mass Effect guns could totally work in real life, just like rail guns do now. The only thing we'd have to figure out in the next few centuries would be how to fit a building-sized power source into a rifle and deal with the recoil that would probably turn your body into red goo. Other than that, we're good. Because science, I'm just gonna 
Wait in this elevator for the next part of the video to load. Thank you so much for watching. The only part of the Mass Effect gun explanation that doesn't really work is that in the codex it says that a sand grain sized piece of metal moving at the speeds that it comes out of the gun could produce nuclear bomb level energy levels. And I tried to calculate that and include it in this video, but to do that, a grain of sand sized thing would have to be moving at many times more than the speed of light. Now, I think the Bioware guys know this because they're super smart PhDs, and that's why they made Element Zero be able to affect something's mass so it can travel faster than the speed of light, theoretically, even though nothing really can. But so, so still, Mass Effect kind of works and half works, but it's all plausible and it has physics in mind, and that's why I love it. Do you know what's a good way to think about how fast kilometers per second is or miles per second? The International Space Station is orbiting around Earth at a few miles per second. And my favorite comparison is by XKCD and Randall Monroe. The, the amount of time it would take for the ISS to cross a football field from, you know, a, a hundred yards is so fast that the ISS would cross the uh, 100 yard point before a bullet fired at the other end would reach the 10 yard line. That's how fast we're talking with these rifles and stuff like that. But who, who am I, who am I talking?